truth is, truth is very important, and truth about the nature of the universe and our destiny are very important things for us to know. And the great virtue of so many religions is, I believe, that they teach us the truth about this matter and make it available to us to react to or not react to as we think fit. The truth about this matter is that there is a God who created the world and sustains it in being. And I propose to argue for that uh, by uh, the highest criteria of scientific reasoning uh, which are available to us. And it has been a common belief, both in Christianity as in Judaism as, and Islam, that the existence of God can be proved by natural reason. And I propose to do that. Uh, let us consider the nature of the hypothesis. Uh, the hypothesis up for discussion is that there is a God. God is supposed to be a personal being. Uh, we are persons. What makes us persons? Well, we've got a certain amount of power to move our arms and legs. Uh, we have beliefs about the world and certain choices as to how to exercise our powers. God is supposed to be a person in this sense, but uh, he is supposed to be a person to whose power uh, there is no limit, to whose beliefs there are all, such, are all necessarily true, there is no limit to their truth, and to whose freedom of choice there are no constraints uh, arising from irrational inclinations. That is to say, he's supposed to be a omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, and perfectly free being. Um, he's supposed to be a person of the simplest kind, therefore there can be a person to whose no... Uh, what makes him a person, there are no limits. Um, if he has these characteristics, it will then follow that he will be perfectly good, because being omniscient, he will know what things are good and bad, and being perfectly free, he will be free from irrational inclinations deterring him from pursuing the good. We, of course, do the good sometimes and sometimes the bad, but the reason why we do the bad is because we have irrational inclinations. If we just acted on reason, we would see things, the things that were good, and we would do them. So, God being perfectly free will therefore also be perfectly good. The hypothesis is that this being is responsible for the existence of the universe and keeping it in being. Why should I think this? Are you talking about the existence of God or whether or not religion benefits society. It's the great benefit, one great benefit, the perhaps greatest benefit of religion, is that it tells people the truth about this matter and enables them to worship the God who is the cause of being. No thanks. Is, is it in I the truth I we don't know? The argument. I should continue the argument. The argument is this is the hypothesis, and it explains the most general features of the universe. There is a universe, a physical universe. It is governed uh, by very general, relatively simple laws, such as the four forces and quantum theory and relativity have captured this. Uh, there may be a deeper scientific explanation of this, but that doesn't matter uh, for the purposes of my argument. Uh, these laws are such that given the initial conditions of the universe, they will bring about the existence of human beings. Um, by means of evolution, among other things. Um, and uh, human beings are conscious, and also we must draw attention to the fact that there is a, uh, our life on Earth involves quite a bit of suffering. Um, now, just one aspect of these uh, data. Laws of nature. What is a law of nature? What is it to say that everything obeys Newton's laws? Well, it's to say every particle in the matter in the universe has just the same powers to attract other particles as every other particle in the universe, and just the same liability to exercise it. All right, so that is the, that is the data. Why would the existence of God explain that? Well, God being good will seek to bring about good things, and we are good things, basically, fundamentally. <laughs> We are persons, and persons are good things. And we have choices, choices to do good or evil. And that's a very great good for us, 
It's a good that God himself does not have, because he can only do good. But to have a choice between good and evil is itself a great good, and we have, can exercise this choice in our responsibilities for each other. We can do harm to each other within limits, or do good to each other, to our children, to our friends, to our neighbors, to distant people in distant countries. A good parent delegates responsibility and allows their children a certain amount of freedom as to how to exercise it. A good God will do that to us. But in order that there should be such beings as us, God must provide the necessary conditions for there being such beings. If we are to be limited beings, they will have to be embodied beings, so we will have to produce a physical universe. Um, if we are to be able to do things in this universe, it must be a regular universe. It must be such that if I stick a dagger in you, you will die, but if I give you food, you will live. But if it was a chaotic universe, then whatever I did with my body would have no difference. I wouldn't know what difference it would make to you. I wouldn't be able to be responsible for you. So it must be a regular universe where we can see how things behave. And that regularity, of course, is derived from the basic laws of physics, which give rise to the familiar macroscopic generalities that food nourishes and uh, uh, poison kills. OK, so it must also be a universe which is productive of our bodies. And since the purpose of our existence is to uh, the goodness of our existence arises from our consciousness, we must be conscious. I'll come to the suffering in a moment. Okay, so if there's God, you'd expect this sort of a universe. I'll, if you think suffering's a problem, I'll come in a moment to that. Um, if there's no God, would you expect this universe? Well, uh, every particle of matter behaves in exactly the same way as every p other particle of matter stretching right out there it's like uh, the same person winning the lottery for, for a trillion, trillion times, and people who don't believe in a God say, oh, well, that's just how it is. The same person does win the lottery a trillion, trillion times. And to believe that every particle of matter behaves in exactly the same way as any other, and this is an ultimate fact which doesn't need an explanation, seems to me deeply unscientific. And I regard the, purpose, the kind of argument being produced for supposing that the scientific laws are ultimate, is deeply unscientific. It's a refusal to ask a very obvious question. You have an enormous number of coincidences, which you can explain by a simple explanation. You really shouldn't stop at the coincidences. Not, no, I'm sorry, I must continue. OK, I must continue. Uh, I must continue. Um, given this, you would expect uh, uh, so there's a reason why if there's a God, it's a simple explanation, you expect the data. If there's no God, you certainly wouldn't expect the data, and you wouldn't expect the universe to be regular, you wouldn't expect it to produce us, you wouldn't expect it to produce conscious beings, and so on. Inevitably, if we have choices, then there to be serious choices, they must be choices of whether to hurt or to benefit others. And so there will be evil if we abuse those choices. Likewise, uh, God is interested in making not merely people who have a nice life on earth, but people who are really good people who uh, will be worthwhile keeping alive forever. And we humans have another important characteristic. Every time we good, do good, it's easier to do good next time. Every time we do bad, it's easier to do bad next time. And so we make our character. And if we're to make a really saintly character, we have to have serious problems to face which we overcome. If I get ill, badly ill, I then have a choice as to how to deal with this. And I can deal with it by uh, 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 being cheerful and uh, not resenting it. And if I have that sort of opportunity, I can make a saintly character. And it's reason, there's reason to expect God would provide those opportunities for the limited period of an earthly life in order to cope with things. The world is the sort of world you would expect a God to make. If there wasn't a God, it would be unbelievable that there would be such a world. I therefore, on that basis...